Welcome everybody to the Church of the Tone Priest. We are revisiting our Gibson Electronics GA5T Skylark Crestline Edition 1962. And we're uh, with our new uh, skills that we've acquired over the preceding months. We're going to uh, spruce up the circuit. And uh, you've joined the program already in progress. Uh, what I've done so far is I've uh, replaced speaker wire here coming off of the output transformer. And let me show you what else is going on. Alright, so we replaced the electrolytic capacitors and they were just kind of swinging in the breeze. So that is unacceptable. And when I purchased this uh, amplifier, it did not have the cabinet and somebody had already been in here completely molesting the circuit. And if you watched the last video I did on this, uh, you may recall that I was having some issues with the tremolo circuit. I was getting very high voltage where there shouldn't be. And I think I just found the problem here. So on a 6EU7 vacuum tube, pins 1 and 2 are for the heaters. And we have pin 1 here. We have a wire coming off of it. So this is our heater, and it's getting injected into pin 9, which is the cathode. So, I don't know exactly what's going on here, but it ain't right. I don't think it's right. So that may be the source of all of our confusion on that. So we're going to go through here, double check everything, and we're going to spruce up everything, make it uh, legit. Hammer time! Open Gundam Star! And uh, hopefully it'll be even better than it was before because it was already pretty good. Uh, here is the schematic we are using. Now there are many, many versions of the GA5 and GA5T. So if you have one of these and you're servicing it or thinking about servicing it, uh, be very careful with the schematic you choose. But this appears to be the correct one for this amplifier here. All right, if that all sounds interesting to you, and I'm not sure why it would, but if it does, hang tight, here we go. All right, I have very carefully traced and verified the wiring of the circuit, and uh, it turns out... Excuse me. And it turns out that that uh, brown wire coming off the heater, see that? Uh, was actually just getting tied into ground, which was fine. So we'll put that guy to ground somewhere. So that leaves us with the original question, where the heck is the tremolo circuit getting all that voltage from? But uh, we'll uh, mount and wire these filter caps nicely somehow, and then we'll uh, pop the tubes in, and we'll start measuring voltages and uh, see where we're at. Alrighty, so we have... Uh, Put the heater ground back to ground, and we have uh, spiffed up our filter caps here, our electrolytic caps. So we have the reservoir cap, the uh, filter cap for the power tubes, and then the filter cap for the preamp tubes. And that'll be a little bit nicer. Got some stuff dangling up here. We'll make it look nice later. This guy right here is a little bogus. That is um, this guy here, the first dropping resistor. Uh, it's supposed to be a 1K. I believe this is a 6.8K. I'm assuming I'd put this guy in here to get the voltages down a little closer to what they're calling for. But I think we're ready to tube her up. Uh, connect a speaker, plug her into the current limiter over there, and uh, see how we did. All right, we got her fired up on the current limiter. Running 120 volts. We're at full volume. <laughs> She's working. Got a new light bulb in there. A little static, but that's from uh, single coil pickups next to the computer. You like Huey Lewis on the news? Uh, they're okay. Alright, 
so we'll take her off the current limiter and then we'll check some voltages and uh if that all works out well we'll bias her up and i don't know do something else after that all right i got you set up on mr tripod here hopefully you can see everything here more or less can read the meter um took her off the current limiter powering up for the first time so we'll put this barrier on and we'll turn the amplifier on bam just want to check make sure there's no crazy currents nope looks good 250 milliamps of draw or actually sorry 350 in climbing we'll let the tube settle out Let's see what we got gonna make sure that the uh we get guitar signal through it that way we know yep. So we're definitely hooked up to a load on the output transformer. We don't want to blow up any transformers. And looks like the uh, Variac uh, readings on the current has settled out. So let's uh, take some measurements here. So the first measurement, I don't know if you're going to be able to read this. I need a film crew. I need David Attenborough. Um, should have 240 volts off of the reservoir cap going to the center tap of the output transformer and that's this guy right here we have 266 so we're super high we're at 120 volts from the wall um well it is what it is um and we go through a 1K resistor, which is actually, I think I replaced it with a 6.8K resistor, and we should have 235 volts. And that's pretty close, 238.4. But we're out of balance because, you know, if we were getting 240 to the center tap, and whatever we just read there, 238, that would be better. But now we're way off. So I think what I'm going to do is replace that 6.8K with back to the 1K. So the, the ratios will be better between the, um, the plates and the uh, screen. And since that 1K affects everything down the line, I'm going to uh, stop and do that now. All right, we got that 1K resistor in. Uh, that's this guy right here. Let's fire it back up. Give the tubes a second to warm up. While we're waiting for the tubes to warm up, I uh, hope everybody's having a great summer. We're about halfway through. Weather here in New England is nice and hot, not too humid. We had some very beautiful days. So I hope everyone's enjoying the weather and not being cooped up in a house doing electrical projects. All right, let's see what we got here. All right, looks like everything has stabilized, according to Mr. Variac meter. Okay, so to the reservoir cap, 263. Yeah, that's fine, 263. And it's moving around a little bit, but like 252. Gonna write that down. 263, 252. That's a little better. Having uh, such a big difference like we had before between your uh, plate and screen voltages will certainly have an effect on how the power tubes perform. All right, moving on. What else do we need here? So pin 7 of V2. Um, this is the one we were having problems with before. It's supposed to be 110. And these are nine pin tubes, so nine, eight, seven, sixty four. The hell, sixty four now. Interesting. I'm at the right spot. Yeah. Wow, that's weird. I wonder if, um, when I went in and changed a few components and cleaned some stuff up, I wonder if I fixed an error that I did not notice before. Um, because, let's see if I can do this without getting electrocuted. Well, we'll talk about it after. 
let's continue. Oops, 64 volts. Let's continue measuring voltages. Um, so V2 pin 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Where can we grab this guy? 9, 8, 7, 6. We can get that right here. There's probably going to be a... <laughs> 165, looking for 150, so that's good. All the voltages are going to be a little bit higher than what the schematic's calling for because we are at 120, 121, 120 volts. And back in 1962, that would probably be pretty uncommon to have voltage that high coming from your wall. All right, pin 7 of V1, 987. 150, that's dead on, even at a buck 20. And then pin 6, 9876, 134. And it's calling for 130. This is excellent. All right, let me uh, take you off of Mr. Uh, tripod and we'll discuss the uh, tremolo voltage, which was supposed to be 110, and we're uh, reading what? 64. So hang tight. All right, in the first video, I did on this amplifier. I was getting very high voltage right here. It was supposed to have 110 going into the plate of the tremolo oscillation triode of uh, V2. And looks like, yeah, so you should, this is the um, voltage dropping resistor, this 470K, which would take it from 235 and drop it down to 110. But try as I might, I could not really get this voltage to move, and I believe we have a one meg in there right now. And now we're down around 65 instead of wherever we were before. So whatever I did working on this amp today has, seems to have fixed the problem. It may have also been the tube that was in that position because, um, there was either a Sylvania or a GE tube in V2, and the tremolo would not work. But when I replaced it, the tremolo would work. So it was probably a problem with the tube, one of the triodes in the tube. RCA tubes cost you no more, and they assure you of the best pictures your set can produce. So we'll go back in, and we'll take uh, this one meg out, and we'll put her back to stock, 470K, and we'll uh, check it again. All right, we have that uh, resistor back to stock, 470K. Turn the amp back on. That all looks good. Give it a second to warm up and see what we got. Okay, so V2 pin 7. Uh, 9, 8, 7. 81. Huh. Still low. That's weird. This is like the weirdest thing I've ever encountered. First, it was way too high, and I couldn't get it to lower. But now, it's too low. Uh, I think it'll be fine. We'll test out the tremolo and see how it works. But yeah, 81 volts going to pin 7 of V2. So what are we short? 30 volts? That's weird really weird all right well uh oh it's all hooked up let's uh let's see what we got all right, i think all that statics because the phone is uh, right next to the amp that's just with a speaker on the bench, so it's going to sound a little tinny, but I like it. It sounds a lot better already. Tremolo is working better now too. Let me uh, shut this off so we're not getting all that noise. 
Tremolo sounds better now, too, when the frequency was set to, you know, either extreme high or extreme low, uh, you would barely hear the effect, and uh, now, on the extreme, you know, fast tremolo, it's uh, loud and clear. Um, gets a little bit weak when it's turned completely the opposite way to the uh, slowest uh, tremolo, but uh, it's still very usable, sounds very good. All right, so now we need to bias her up. So we'll use our bias worksheet here. Can you see that? I already measured the, this is uh, cathode biased. And the bias resistor calls for a three, what the heck does it call for? 370, I think. 270. 270, and I measured it 310, is that right? Might have to lift the leg out of there to measure that because it's measuring 310, but it's got a bunch of other crap connected to it. So we'll um, go back and I'll, I'll desolder it from the circuit and we'll uh, measure it. But um, what do you got, red, purple, brown? Yeah, that would be 270. So we'll base our calculations assuming that it's right at 270. Uh, voltage drop. Are we on? No, we're not on. While we're waiting for the tubes to heat up again, I uh, just want to give a very special thank you to Uncle Doug. Um, check out his channel if you don't already. I'm sure you probably do, but uh, you know, I'm, uh, he was very generous with his uh, time and his wisdom. Uh, I had a few questions about some things, and you know, it was very nice of him to help me out. So, uh, um, I'm very happy to support him on Patreon. Um, I think more people should, because I think if we raise enough money for him, you know, he can go out and buy a vintage Tweed Fender basement amplifier in mint condition. Because if there's anybody out there that deserves to have one of those suckers, it's Uncle Doug. Alright, let's see what we got here. That's weird. No, let's shut that off. All right, 16.83, voltage drop, and plate voltage. Uh, pin 6 on a 6AQ5, is that correct? No, pin 5. Pin 5 on the AQ5. So 1, 2, I'm all caught up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, yep. Got a blue wire to this one and a brown wire to the other one. 259, you see that? You probably can't see the meter. Two fifty nine point five. All right. All right, we'll do some calculations and see where we're at. All right, and as suspected, we're gonna have to go in and change the bias resistor, and uh, we'll measure it measure the exact um, resistance of that resistor when we pull it out of the amp. But assuming it's a 270 ohm resistor, uh, the voltage dropped 16.83, plate voltage was 259.5. So if we do all the math, we come out with 16.17 watts of plate dissipation. Divide that by 2 because it is a double-ended amp, and we're at 8. And a 6AQ5 has 12 watts maximum plate dissipation. So we're going to try a little bit smaller uh, bias resistor, depending upon what this guy measures, and uh, get it a little bit closer to 12. Hang tight. We're almost there. Pulled out the bias resistor, and it actually measured 312.7 ohms, and it's supposed to be a 270. So yeah, this guy was tired, and it was time for him to go anyway. Um, but that, that actually made our problem worse, because now we're down to pretty much 7 watts of plate dissipation. That's nearly half of uh, what we're looking for. So this sucker's going to be a real ripper once she's all biased up. So, uh, yeah, let's do that now. Alright, we ended up with a 130 ohm resistor. Cathode bias resistor. And that's bringing us up to almost 8 watts of plate dissipation. Uh, it's a little low, but 
can always change it later, and uh, there's also no no need to abuse the tubes. It actually sounds pretty good. Check this out. Crank. All right, so one final thing I'm going to check is, let me uh, switch the camera here. All right, so you can see on the first triode of V1, is a 20 microfarad bypass capacitor on the cathode, but there is nothing on the, uh, no bypass capacitor on V2, this I drew in here. So I'm going to um, grab some jumpers and we'll experiment with uh, popping one in and out and seeing what it does. All right, so we have a bypass capacitor um, jumped in with some alligator clips, uh, and it's bypassing the cathode resistor pin 9 of V1, uh, 25 microfarad. Let's see what happens. Mm -hmm. Apparently nothing good. So if I turn the volume all the way up, like past 9, you started to hear the oscillation, so I think 25 is probably too much. But it is giving it some real nice breakup. Now let's see if I can do this without electrocuting myself here. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like the, uh, the bypass capacitor there, so uh, 25 is too big. I'll see if I can find something a little bit smaller so we don't go into oscillation when we crank it. All right, now we have a 22 jumped in, letting the tubes warm up. And I also have a 10 microfarad cap available. But uh, let's see how this guy sounds. still going into oscillation. Alright, so, I'm gonna pop this guy out. You see that? There's nothing to see. Let go. Get the 10. These alligator clips are a pain in the butt to use. The little rubber shielding here is all slippery. All right, here we go. It would be nice to have a decade box. If anybody wants to buy me one. Seems like it doesn't matter what the uh, capacitance is of the bypass cap, it just goes into oscillation once you put the volume past 9. It's really weird. But I do like uh, what they do to the tone of the uh, amplifier. All right, I'm going to keep experimenting, and uh, we'll be back, and I'll let you know what I did. I played around with substitutions for a bypass cap right here. I went uh, anywhere from 4.7 all the way up to 50 microfarad. And an interesting phenomenon is um, they all send the amp into oscillation at the same spot, pretty much 9 on the volume knob. So it's going to be a product of the resistance rather than the capacitance. But uh, for now... I figured, you know what, this is probably more trouble than it's worth, so the amp is pretty much back to stock specifications, so we'll put her back together, put her in the cab, and we'll play with her uh, stock for a while, 
And then at a future time and date, uh, maybe we'll kick her up a notch and add something there and revisit this whole thing. So, uh, yeah, let's do that. Let's, uh, there you go. Focus. Focus. Good morning. It's the next day. And, uh, last night I was thinking, you know, I really like the way the sound that, uh, bypass capacitor sounded, but I didn't like the fact that if I installed it, you know, if I turn the volume past nine, it goes into oscillation. And then uh, I was looking at the amp and I remembered that the previous owner had drilled a couple of holes in the front of the chassis, including one over here. Maybe we could make it switchable. Now, of course, the, uh, the resistor here, the cathode resistor is right here, and so this hole would have been ideal, but that's just too close to the edge. But there was one here, and, you know, that's kind of a long run to go from here all the way over there. But um, I figured, you know, if I ran a line, that's going to create a bunch of noise or have a very good chance of doing so. But, you know, whatever, we're going to try these things. So we installed a switch. I originally just had a regular wire going from here. And all this switch is doing is sending the capacitor to ground. And, yep, I was right. You flip it on and it made a bunch of 60 cycle hum, or 120 cycle hum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on. Um, so I tried a shielded cable. And that's where we're at now. I had this, I couldn't try it out yesterday because the, uh, Tone none was sleeping. So let's try it now. And with all shielded cables, you want the shielding to be grounded only on one side, and it's grounded over here. With the, uh, we got, uh, coming off the bypass cap, we go into the red wire, goes into the common of the switch, comes out of the, con the bottom of the switch into the black wire, and then the black wire and the ground wire are grounded right here. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, this is with the bypass capacitor not in circuit. Volume is, uh, put it on seven. any uh, increase to the noise floor. This is with it off and then I'll flip it on. the problem with um, when that's engaged it goes into oscillation so I'll turn the volume all the way up see as you can hear it that's basically from 9 to 10 flip it off and it doesn't go into oscillation so I'm happy we uh, used that little hole for something that's what she said That's what who's a... I never know. <laughs> and, uh, sounds great. Put that in there. You get more breakup and, uh, yeah, this is a great amp. I love this amp. Alright, so this uh, amplifier and its circuit is about as spiffed up as I'm going to be able to get it for now. So I think we're going to end the video here. 
Um, I'm not going to install it back into the cabinet. I'm going to go to the home desk spot today. We're going to get a piece of wood for the back door of the cabinet. And then we're going to um, finish the cabinet, toll exit up, and uh, make it nice. So that's going to be a separate video. And hopefully we'll see you there. So I hope everybody enjoyed the video. And uh, thanks for coming and all that good stuff. And rock on. Done.